Hey, what's going on guys? Today I want to talk about how we can take a single column hierarchy presentation and convert it into a hierarchy table in tabular form. Uh, this is going to be in Excel. Oftentimes when you're working with different financial softwares or different management softwares, when you export a hierarchy, so for example, chart of accounts, maybe a branch roll up into regions and companies and stuff like that. Oftentimes these these softwares are designed to just spit it out in a single column and that's very unhelpful uh, just because oftentimes when we're working in tabular data we need the hierarchy levels in their separate uh, columns so that we can kind of define oh this is the branch column this is the state column so on and so forth so when a lot of these programs that I work with spit out that single column, uh, the level of the hierarchy is defined by uh, indent. Sometimes it's also defined by space, but I'm going to be approaching it from the perspective of uh, those indent levels today. So I've got a quick trick. Uh, it uses some, some very light VBA code, uh, nothing too daunting. And so we can walk through that and then kind of just run a quick example and hopefully this can uh, provide some value to your work. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, as you can see here on my screen, I've got a very simple, short example of how a hierarchy might get produced in a single column. So for this example, I've just made up some data. Pretend this is where I do business. I wish I don't uh, have many clients, but just pretend that I've got Bulldog Analytics up here is like the parent. And then I've got business in the United States broken into different regions so New England, Southeast, West Coast, and their associated uh, states and cities. And then also I've got a little Canada business. I don't actually, but let's just pretend. And then let's also pretend I own a LLC called Pitbull Services where I do some shady tax stuff in the Cayman Islands. Uh, again, all of this is just for fun. But uh, let's go ahead and try and extract the hierarchical levels to produce a tabular uh, data output. So. What do I want to do first? Well, I want to leverage the VBA uh, indent level function so that we can tap into what is the indent level that uh, exists here. So uh, first you need to go ahead and file save as and make sure it's saved as an Excel macro enabled workbook. Once you do that, you can do Alt uh, F11, Alt F11, and this accesses the Microsoft VBA editor. So. Uh, sorry if you can hear my daughter screaming in the background, uh, real life here. So here we are going to right click on, uh, our hierarchy test. This is the, this is the file that I'm in and we're going to go to insert module. Now this is by no means a VBA tutorial. I'm just going to kind of write out a function. I'm going to make a couple comments on it and then we'll get back to Excel. All right, guys, so this is just the basic uh, function syntax to create a function. So I've established a function called cell indent over a range. Uh, I've formatted this as an integer, and then I've used the VBA function indent level to uh, produce this. So um, that's what's occurring here. I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now cell indent should be an accessible function for us in Excel. So let's go ahead and close out and see if that's the case. All right, so let's go in here and type in equals cell indent. And as you can see, it's now an available function. So all I need to do is reference uh, the column that I'm interested in determining the cell indent and click enter. So as you can see, the indent here is one. If I copy that down, uh, it defines the indent level for each. And it's uh, encouraging when ones that fall on the same indent level have the same uh, output here. So we're going to go ahead and title this uh, cell indent level, if I can spell, and we're going to take the output of this cell indent level and we're going to produce uh, separate columns for each hierarchical level. So what I'm going to do in the next column is I'm going to say equals if cell indent level equals one, because one is the highest kind of parent level in this analysis or in this output uh, for hierarchy, for the single column hierarchy. If uh, B2 equals one, then let's go ahead and return the row context for column A. If it doesn't equal one, then I want to return whatever the value above. And we'll talk about that more here in a second. Now, uh, let's go ahead and lock in these column references, especially for B2 and A2, or column B, column A. So F4 three times, one, two, three, 
Do the same for this one, one, two, three. Basically, we're just locking in the columns so that when we copy this over to new uh, columns, um, it'll stay the same. So let's go ahead and click Enter. Returns Bulldog Analytics. We can copy it all the way down. And this is exactly what I wanted it to do. Now, how this is all getting populated, because none of this is uh, ends at level one, which is what's called in the if statement in uh, our formula, uh, basically because it's not indent level one it returns the value above and it carries that all the way down until it recognizes a value one and then it starts over so that's what's going on there we'll call that hierarchy level one and now we're basically going to try to do the same thing for hierarchy level two so <clears throat> you'll see because i locked in the columns uh, b2 and a2 stay the same and uh, all I need to do is change what it equals to to the number two because we're looking for hierarchy level two. Let's copy that down. Go ahead and uh, title this hierarchy level two. Oh, look at that. Something weird's going on. So the issue is that it's looking here in the cell indent level uh, column for the number two. It's not finding it, so it's returning the textual output above. That's not what we want here. In fact, uh, in this instance, we can just return a blank. So we're gonna say if B2 is less than whatever uh, level that we're, we're trying to look for an output here, so two in this instance, then we're gonna just return a blank, else we can go with our formula. So now it looks much better. And in fact, this one down here was showing Canada for the Pitbull Services LLC because it was looking back at the uh, Bulldog Analytics uh, hierarchy. We didn't want that to happen either. So now we've got uh, two blanks, which is correct. Let's move on to, we'll just copy over for three, four, five. Which five is uh, as far as this one goes. And then we can just copy this over. And all I need to do is replace where it references two in these two spots to three for level three, four for level four, and five, oops, five for level five. Let's go ahead and copy these down. All right, guys, so that's some of the heavy lifting and we're presented now with our output. But the problem is we need to limit this down to kind of uh, just the the rows that matter so we need to basically have a unique identifier or key uh, that we can relate to other uh, other data and that in this instance in this very simple uh, example is going to be the city name that's kind of our unique identifier now uh, if everything kind of fell in the same hierarchy level this would be easy as going into data filtering on hierarchy level five excluding blanks and then you would have this nice kind of tight uh, hierarchy uh, tabular view. The problem is that last example, and I have several real world instances where this happens, the city actually falls on hierarchy level four. So for whatever reason, things can jump around, especially when you're looking at like a chart of accounts. Uh, maybe there's so many groupings kind of above an account level uh, record. And so um, that can vary based on which hierarchy it falls on. And so we need some way to identify uh, the unique kind of city names so that we can pull out that key or unique identifier in order to filter out all of the uh, other unneeded rows and also to create that unique uh, key so we can relate it to other data. So uh, I'll just say one thing real quick. Sometimes if you're working with like branch data, for example, at a company, maybe you'll have something and I'll just uh, do this in a couple examples where maybe uh, pretend these are branches. And so it'd be, it might have this consistent naming convention and I'm not going to do all these, but we'll jump down to Georgetown and put branch there. So, uh, I'm going to just do, let's say equals, I'll do an if statement. If find branch underscore in close parentheses, then return our, our hierarchy value as else blank. And it's doing that. So I'll just in this instance use if air. I try to avoid if air, but I think it's okay here. So if I copy that down, 
Now it gives me a list of uh, our unique identifiers. So if I come into data, do a filter, filter on exclusions of blank, then you've got this as your branch key, and then this is kind of your tabular format for the branch hierarchy. Now, oftentimes that's not the case. You just need basically whatever the max indent level for the specific uh, grouping of the hierarchy uh, is, and that's kind of the way we'd have to approach it. So I'm gonna walk through that as well. Um, so for how I approach this, I kind of came up with this. If you <laughs> know of a better way or a cleaner way to do this, please call it out in the comments or reach out to me. But uh, basically my thought is, okay, anytime, uh, you know, we've got Bulldog Analytics, United States, New England, Maryland, Baltimore, Annapolis. So these are on the same plane right here, the same hierarchy level, and then it jumps backwards. And that's kind of the indicator when it jumps backwards that a new uh, record in our tabular view or tabular version of the hierarchy is being defined. And so basically what I did, I said equals two minus one. And basically I just calculated the uh, row to row change. And so I dropped that down. And so anytime a negative value exists, that indicates that there's a change in the hierarchy level uh, and we need to record uh, new results. And so you can see that here as well, uh, so on and so forth. So this negative value in the uh, indent level change basically indicates that a new grouping is, being, is being defined in the hierarchy. And so how can we go about uh, utilizing this in order to identify the kind of max indent level based on the row. Well, I've found a uh, method that works and so I'm gonna kinda just do it and then uh, try to explain it a bit and let me know if you have questions. But basically I would create like an index uh, row. So kind of starting at one and counting its way down. And um, we'll just do that and then drag it on down. Next what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use this max ifs uh, function to create a grouping. And so let me just do this and then we can kind of talk about what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna say if max ifs, and then the range that I wanna return in this instance is gonna be that index column, and we'll talk about this here in a second. And I'm gonna do this unique thing with the range. So I'm gonna say uh, J2 to J2, but I'm gonna lock in the first J2 with F4. And then for this second piece of the range, I only wanna lock in the column. So I can either type in, or I can click into that uh, value and click F4 three times, one, two, three, and it locks in J, but then it leaves the row value uh, dynamic. So when I drag this down, that two will go to three, three will go to four, so on and so forth. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do here. And then I actually uh, want to apply a condition on that cell indent uh, change column in, in I. So I'm gonna do comma, and then I'm going to just override the J with I. And then the condition I want to apply to that is, is it less than zero? Enter. Now just a quick note, it returns zero here. So what it's basically saying is it can't find any match to the condition of less than zero for column I. And so anytime there isn't a match or the condition is not fulfilled, it'll return a zero. So let's go ahead and copy this down. Now what you'll see is that it starts kind of creating these groupings. So it's got zero, seven, 10. And what this is doing is every time it recognizes a negative value, which is our condition in the max ifs statement, it's returning the max value in the indent, in the index column. Now, this is the best way I could figure how to do this because it's kind of a progressively increasing number. And if I were to use, uh, for example, the cell indent level, you know, that, that all kind of stays between one and five, so it wouldn't necessarily identify uh, the grouping for us. So I thought this, be, this was the best way to do this. Again, if you know of a better way, please let me know. But now that I've done this, I can use another max if statement. I can say equals max ifs. And in this instance, we're just gonna reference the whole B range. And you can either select the values or I'm just gonna do this. Uh, I'll lock it in with F4, comma. Then we're gonna reference that kind of grouping column that we just defined with the uh, index number used as kind of the identifier. So we're gonna do that. I'll go ahead and lock it in with F4, comma. And then I want to use the current row context from that column. And I'll lock in the column aspect with F F4, one, two, three. And I'll close these parentheses and click enter. Now this five, well, let's go ahead and copy this down. 
So what you'll see is that this five basically indicates that whatever row it's on, this is part of a five level hierarchy. So one, two, three, four, five. Five being the most granular where it identifies the city name. All of these aspects in the Bulldog Analytics elements are part of a five level hierarchy as we kind of called out. What you'll see down here in the Pitbull Services LLC example, the max indent for Georgetown is identified as four, which is very insightful for us and allows us to identify that key identifier or that unique identifier, which is the city name in this instance. So now what I can do is I can write another uh, formula. In this instance, I'm going to use the index formula. So right here, I'm going to say equals index. I'm going to select my whole range for the hierarchy level results. So like this, again, I'm going to lock that in with F4. And then as you can see next, it wants to call out the row number. So in this instance, I'll just use my index level. I'll lock in the row with uh, F4 three times, comma, and then lastly, we need to identify the column number. And we just defined where the kind of key element of our uh, city lives in based on the column number in, in column L. So I'm gonna type in that, F4, one, two, three, just cause I'm accustomed to that. We'll click enter, copy that all the way down. And as you can see, we now have a list of those city names. Now from here, I can, you know, title this city key if I want. I can apply a filter on this. And um, if I exclude the blanks, you'll see that this is the output that we want for any uh, table that's used in analysis. And oftentimes this filter will occur when you pull it into Power Query, for example. Uh, we want to leave this calculation as dynamic as possible, but that's how you go about it. So I hope this video was insightful. I hope I didn't uh, ramble on for too long and that you found some, some uh, benefits from it. If you have any questions around how the logic works out, please feel free to uh, reach out via comments. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.